All right, now we're talking about that first record, and I, I was listening to those first two records last night, and I was going, oh, my God. Man, those were like, I mean, you're a country artist, but those records have a huge rock energy. Drums are loud, guitars are loud, your vocals are loud. It's not like your vocals up here and everything's mixed away in the back. I mean, those were rock, kick-ass records with a big country influence, but there was a lot of rock in there. I mean, you know what I yeah. mean? I mean, with, with, well, thanks to you, man. Oh, what that? Oh, dude. <laughs> you're banging them. Oh, dude, I was. Uh, dude, I can hear my energy. There is no question. But they mixed the drums real loud. Was that, I mean, Jimmy obviously wanted, he had that vision, but you obviously loved that vision. Yeah. I came in um, to Nashville and getting a record deal in a really interesting time, you know, speaking of waves, uh, what we just were. Um, when I got my record deal, you know, Alan Jackson and Brooks and Dunn were the first couple people I went on tour with. And I was like the new kid at the record label that was making this like rockin' country music kind of sound at a time where I was going on tour with Alan Jackson, who's pretty traditional and Brooks and Dunn was the middle, middle ground between that still, still traditional and country, but had like a very nice rock and feel. And so I was always trying to find my like groove of what it is I was. And I think that's okay for artists coming in to kind of be figuring out what they are and where their place is. Um, but you're right. Like that, that those first couple of albums um, were definitely like uh, uh, pieces of me being from Florida, Leonard Skinner. I love Leonard Skinner, Southern rock. Uh, so there was a lot of that. And then there was a lot of me also trying to fit into what was um, a country song at the time, you know, cause you can't just come out of nowhere. Um, and so I, I, I look back at those albums. I listen to myself singing. I listen to kind of who I was or who I was tr like hoping to be. And um, it's always kind of nice to reminisce and, and go back and listen to that. Dude, that was, I'm so busy. I never go back and listen to anything I did. But thought when, I li when I listened to them last night, I was like, and then I f didn't realize I was doing some reading. And I, you wrote Eight Second Ride when you were in this cover band call Ye <laughs> Yeehaw Junction before you were anybody you'd do it you know what I mean and so and that song I recorded that song and it was your first gold sell selling single right yeah uh, that's crazy yeah that's crazy it is kind of wild that's and crazy because the song it's the song itself is like lyrically and 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 artistically isn't really anything it's uh I was an 18 year old kid just writing. So I was, I remember trying to write songs for the kids in college that wanted to hear that kind of stuff. And I, uh, but yeah, it's weird how songs can just, when they connect, they connect and, yeah. and when people like them, they like them. And that song, even all these years later, I played every night in my show and people love it and they <laughs> ask for it. And, and, and even though you can grow, grow older and more mature as a person and an artist, like, your songs grow with you. And I, I've always loved that about music too. It can take you back to those, those times. Well, some artists, they go, I ain't playing that song. I wrote that 50 years ago. It's embarrassing. But if it's a hit, people want to still hear it because it's like the soundtrack of their life, you know? So, you know, I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, I mean, I check this out. So I was doing a, a, a John Fogarty album and he was doing duets. And one of the duets was Keith, Keith Urban, who I've known for a long time. Keith came up to me uh, and he told me a story that blew my mind. He said, Mellencamp was really big in Australia. And we were, I think we did seven sold out shows at the entertainment center four one day, a day off, and then three the next, the next three days. And he said he was in Australia and he had a country band or he playing country cl in clubs with country music and they go and play in the rock clubs. And everybody was telling him, nah, you should be a country artist. Nah, you should be a rock artist. And he was so frustrated when he saw us, and we had the fiddle and the accordion. He suddenly went, wait a minute, John Mellencamp's doing whatever the effing he wants to do. And it's kind of yeah. got a little of the Americana and the rock. He went, oh, I'm just going to be me. And he shared that. He sat right in front of me and said, he said, man, we sat. I brought my band to the show. And he said, look at this. This is what we're going to do. We're going to do our version. Look what Mellencamp's doing. He's just doing his thing. I thought that was so cool. Not that it was our band, but that he figured out who he was going to be and went after it and became, and, you know, he's rocking and country, you know? That's what made, that's what made me think about it, you know?
Yeah, he is. I, I was fortunate, as you mentioned to, earlier, I was fortunate to spend a, a whole summer with him out on the road, uh, the two of us on tour one oh, year. Uh, I learned a lot. I learned a lot from him. I bet you did.